1960s, the land that we now know as Canada was called British North America. It was made up of seven colonies and two territories. Each of the colonies had its own government, and all were facing major challenges. Exports to the United States and the United Kingdom had gone down, and economies were struggling. People wanted to increase trade between the colonies. That meant building railways, which wasn't cheap. In the province of Canada, people were deeply divided over politics, language, and religion. The government was deadlocked. On top of everything, the United States was becoming richer and more powerful. British North Americans were afraid of being invaded or annexed. So what was the solution? The maritime colonies had an idea, uniting to form a new country. They planned a conference to talk about it. When the province of Canada heard about the conference, they asked to come too. In just over a week of meetings, they decided that a wider union would make all the colonies stronger and more prosperous. They called this plan Confederation. But agreeing on the rules of a new country wasn't easy. How would it be governed? Who would have more power, the provinces or the federal parliament? They decided to meet again in a few weeks to work out the details. The next conference was in Quebec City. Representatives from Newfoundland joined in this time. After 15 days of debate and negotiations, the group came up with a list of resolutions. Then, each colony had to get the approval of its legislature. But Confederation wasn't popular with everyone. In the Maritimes, it caused bitter disagreements. In the end, Confederation was rejected by Newfoundland and Prince Edward Island, but approved by the other colonies. So, leaders from the province of Canada, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick met one last time. The Quebec resolutions were turned into a bill, which was approved quickly by the British Parliament. The law was called the British North America Act. It created Canada and was also our first constitution. It outlined the new parliamentary system including the Monarch, the Governor-General, the Senate, and the House of Commons. It also divided powers between the federal and provincial governments. The Act came into effect on July 1st, 1867, and modern Canada was born. Sir John A. Macdonald, one of the main supporters of Confederation, became the country's first Prime Minister. Today, the British North America Act is still a very important part of our Constitution. Even though Canada has grown and changed a lot since 1867, the rules and traditions set out during Confederation continue to govern the country today. Mm -hmm.